Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead now, I think. Um, this is a, a briefing, um, which is a, a technical briefing uh, in, in the main, but uh, also a general product briefing around Samsung uh, 4.0 browser, uh, Samsung Internet. Uh, my name is Daniel Appelquist. I'm working as an as a ambassador for the, uh, for the Samsung Internet project. Um, I'm also uh, uh, a um, kind of a operator in the web standards world. Um, I have been active in W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, for a number of years, uh, where I'm currently um, co-chairing uh, a group called the Technical Architecture Group uh, with uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who is the um, inventor of the web. And I have been active in a lot of activities around uh, bringing the web to mobile. I'm very pleased to be working uh, with the team that's, being, that's um, putting together uh, Samsung Internet Browser because I see it as being the next kind of stage of the evolution of uh, that, that progress of bringing the web to the mobile uh, to the um, so this is an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I've already given you a bit of an intro. Um, I'm happy to, uh, you can learn more about me on Twitter if you, if you go to follow me on Torgo or uh, anywhere else. I'm not going to talk about me anymore. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about um, the Samsung Internet Browser and a little bit of the history. And if I, just to repeat myself, if, if you are not presenting, can you please, uh, can you please go on mute? Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit about the history of the Samsung Internet Browser. We're going to talk about progressive web apps, uh, which is a new trend in developing web apps that is, that is core to the uh, evolution of the Samsung Internet Browser, as well as many other web browsers. It's really a cross-platform thing. Um, we're going to talk about some of the new privacy features, uh, including the Content Blocking API. And finally, we're going to talk about Gear VR integration and the Gear VR uh, Internet Browser. Um, and we're going to hear about some work that's been going on, some exciting work that's been going on in standards around, uh, around that topic, as well as some exciting um, product release that uh, has recently happened in, in that space and, and the kind of experiences that that's enabling. Um, so first of all, to uh, kick off, um, so for uh, just to introduce the topic, Samsung Internet is, is, a, is a browser for Android. Uh, it's a uh, fast and reliable web browser for your phone and tablet. Um, and it uh, is the, uh, replaces the stock Android browser on the Samsung Galaxy devices since around 2012. Uh, it's Chromium based. Um, and when I'm talking about the Chromium project, for those who are not familiar with how Chromium works, Chromium is the open source project analogous to WebKit, uh, which, uh, which is, um, or Gecko engine for, for those other browsers, uh, which, is, which underlies uh, not only Google Chrome, but also um, other, many other browsers such as uh, Samsung uh, Internet, such as also Opera Browser, um, Yandex Browser. There are a number of other browsers that are that are uh, built on top of the Chromium um, base. Um, Samsung is also a committer into the Chromium project. So we are not only riding on top of this work, but we're also an active participant in that community. And I think that's important to, to kind of point out um, there's a commitment uh, there to the open source nature of that project and to collaborative work with other partners or other parties uh, within the Chromium project. Um, the reason that we're making a big noise about this right now is that four, the 4.0 release, which has just been released, um, is a major new update with new features um, featuring latest web technologies, uh, which I'll be talking about in a bit, 
but also a new approach, a new philosophy um, to um, uh, when it comes to uh, what how a browser is rolled out, how it's updated, etc. So I want to talk about a couple of the new features right now. Um, we're all, one of the things that we're focusing on is uh, is privacy and security. Um, in 4.0, we are we're offering a better functionality than ever uh, for for what is based, for what is the the Samsung stock browser, um, and we're protecting users' privacy um, using uh, features such as the secret mode, uh, which is a a kind of a private browsing mode, uh, as well as content filtering. Uh, extension support um, as well uh, we're talking about and we have an enhanced multimedia user experience particularly in the mobile to VR um, space I'm not going to read out all of these devices but 4.0 browser is also available on a number of previous generation devices and this is another part of the new philosophy around uh, the rollout of this of this browser. Um, so it's not only available on Galaxy S7, S6, but it's also available on uh, Galaxy S4, S5. Um, and importantly, it's getting automatic updates by the Play Store, which is something that we haven't seen in previous generations of Samsung Internet Browser. They've gener generally been linked to uh, firmware releases. Uh, that's no longer the case. Uh, we're moving towards an evergreen type approach for this browser. Where, roll, where security rollouts, um, security features, patches, etc., are uh, integrated, um, oh, you know, oh, oh, in, a, in a kind of rolling release cycle, which I think is pretty important when it comes to web APIs uh, and the web, because the web is an evolving medium that that uh, and web developers um, have come to expect a uh, new features to be able to to be rolled out. Um, as the specifications are, are solidified. I want to switch gears for a second to talk about some, one of these new features. And this is um, uh, uh, what we're, or what is being called in the industry, uh, progressive web apps. Um, for those not familiar with this, progressive web apps, it, a, uh, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't have any formal definition, but it, it's, a, it's an umbrella term which um, in, is talking about a new kind of web application that borrows from the success of native apps. So we've all seen the um, wild success of, uh, of native apps, uh, the kind of model that um, has uh, become very uh, popular on the mobile device where you go to a, an app store, you download an application, you, you, that, that application is built for that native platform. Um, and that application can access certain device capabilities, can surface on the home screen, um, and uh, and the user has a feeling of ownership of that application as well because they've downloaded it, they've installed it. Um, so progressive web apps is an attempt to mirror some of the best um, aspects of that ecosystem uh, in the web. Uh, using web standards, uh, in particular, um, using uh, built on top of one of the key new web standards of, of this year and of last year, uh, which is um, the service workers specification. And I'm going to talk about service workers in a second uh, in more detail. But the second spec that underlies progressive web apps is the W3C manifest file, which um, tells the web application what assets uh, it needs to download and install. And there's something else that's often discussed when we talk about progressive web apps, which is push notifications, because that those three things, uh, offline use, which is what Service Worker uh, helps to do, deliver, um, the manifest file, which enables a save to home screen user experience, and push notifications are the three main things that people, that developers have been talking about of what is missing or what has been missing from the web platform that have pushed developers to native uh, platforms. I should also mention here that uh, 
again, once again, the, um, Samsung is a strong participant in the standards efforts that are that are um, un that are underlying uh, these technologies. Uh, in particular, uh, the service worker specification, where uh, Junkie Song is a co-editor of that service worker spec, and he is a, a senior member of the engineering team um, for the Samsung Internet Browser. So the idea behind progressive web apps are web apps that install to your home screen under the user's control without the need for an app store uh, experience or any kind of, any kind of uh, control point. Um, so they offer the freedom of the web, but some of the key features of um, native apps, along with push notification and offline support with Service Worker. This is a kind of screen flow of what a typical progressive web app install looks like within the Samsung uh, Internet Browser. Uh, so we have here the ap application, the web application flip cart. Um, and uh, you can see over on the left, the user has navigated to this uh, web application in their browser. Um, and they have received, possibly because they've um, uh, they, this is an application that they continuously use or that they've used multiple times. Um, they've received a notification that, uh, that asks them if they want to uh, save this as a shortcut to their home screen. They click Allow, and then they get a notification that the shortcut has been added to their home screen. Um, the third sc screenshot here is uh, simply the user's home screen where we see the Flipkart icon. Um, and now, if the user taps on that icon, they can bring that web application up in what we call a Chromeless view. Um, I'm using Chrome here in the with a lowercase c, uh, it mean, it meaning uh, in web developer speak, uh, kind of the uh, <coughs> uh, without the uh, window dressing uh, that one normally associates with the browser. So in a in a, in a full uh, screen mode. Um, again, that's something that people have come to expect from native applications. Um, and finally, on the right, you can see that this application also appears in the task view uh, of Android as a separate application, even though, in fact, there's very little difference between this and another tab within Samsung Internet. Um, it's Im importantly, when it's installed to your home screen, it appears in the task view, um, so that you, so that again, it becomes something that you would more associate with a, a native application or a, or a full-fledged application. Um, this uh, is made possible partially by Service Worker. I want to delve into Service Workers a little bit, um, and I'm going to drop a link to. Uh, or at some point, sorry, to uh, I'll drop a link into the chat when we're when when we're done with the session here of the uh, of this link. Um, you can read all about the actual uh, W3 standard at that link. Um, it's basically a background uh, thread, uh, JavaScript thread that uh, can act as a proxy. Uh, so it mediates requests to the server. Um, it can access local storage, and uh, it can cache not only web artifacts, but web content. Um, as I said, it's a standard that Samsung have helped to develop, um, and it largely replaces something that ha has been used for offline web application uh, deployment, which is a the HTML5 app cache functionality. Um, and if you're a web developer, uh, you probably have a bad association with App Cache because it has been uh, very strongly criticized by the web developer community as being difficult to use and also um, not addressing the core problem of having to that, that developers have when they're building an offline app. And those problems include uh, not only uh, storing the artifacts of the web application, but also the content of the web application offline, and being able to detect when the when the web application is able is all offline and online, and to be able to uh, act accordingly, uh, to be able to synchronize. Um, uh, so, for instance, a social media web application that uses Service Worker might be able to enable 
to allow the user to make a post uh, even when they're offline and then store that up and uh, queue it up and send it when it's um, when the user is online again. And that's a that's a that's made possible by this uh, proxy mechanism uh, within service workers. Uh, just briefly delving into the second aspect here, the web application manifest file. Uh, again, this is a W3C standard. Um, it, I've listed, it's a JSON uh, file format, very simple. I've, I've uh, kind of listed a typical manifest file uh, on the right-hand side here. Uh, you can see that it specifies icons and other metadata, for instance, whether or not the application is meant to come up in full screen, whether it's meant to come up in landscape mode, etc. cetera. Um, and this is the uh, file, uh, file format that enables the save to home screen uh, approach. Um, finally, uh, push notifications. Um, this is also W3C standard. Um, you'll notice a theme here. Uh, in this case, the, uh, I won't go into the details of it, but the web application registers to send a push notification to the, uh, to the user. Uh, the user gets a permission prompt, um, and again, this comes, this comes to the user through the same permission mechanism as any other uh, permission, such as the permission to use the camera or the per permission to access the location. Um, but now the application can send push alerts to the user. Um, those push alerts are surface, uh, surfaced even if the um, web application itself is not active. Um, that's pretty important, and when and that's because they're uh, built on top of service workers. Uh, and the uh, web app, and upon receiving the push notification, the user can then either bring that, that up in the context of a progressive web app or within the browser uh, itself. So moving on, I want to talk about some of the privacy features, uh, and these are these are um, more browser-specific features that we think are pretty important for modern browsers. So first of all, Samsung Internet 4.0 now includes something called a secret mode for private browsing. Um, private browsing is something that has many, many uses, um, and you know, we're seeing, and I'm particularly a, a proponent of this from a perspective of um, uh, people that are accessing information that they don't want to appear in their um, in their search history, that they don't want to appear in their uh, that they don't want to be tracked while uh, while accessing this kind of information. So that could be political information, it could be health information, it could be any kind of uh, information that that. Um, that they don't want to appear in their normal browsing history. Um, in, in the case of Samsung Internet, uh, this kind of uh, privacy mode is enhanced with the use of a fingerprint sensor. So when, when the user exits the private mode tab or goes into another part of their phone and then they want to come back um, to that tab, they have to um, either enter a password or use a fingerprint uh, sensor to enable that. Um, all the information uh, within the privacy mode is securely encrypted. Um, and I would say that in general, the inclusion of a response uh, of a privacy mode is a response to a user demand um, for greater web privacy that we've seen across the board uh, in the web ecosystem. I want to talk briefly about the content blocking API, which is another key new feature for Samsung Internet 4.0. Um, so, the content blocking API is aimed at enabling third parties to build content blockers. Uh, there are a few uh, content blockers that are in the Play Store already, uh, which you can download and install alongside of um, Samsung Internet 4.0. Um, Adblock Fast and Crystal are two examples. Um, we're working with the developers of other uh, content blocking extensions. Uh, to bring those extensions to Samsung Internet uh, as well. Um, I believe there is a strong user demand for content blocking, which is part of the reason that has driven uh, the, the release of this. Um, we're seeing a increased installation of content blockers when, uh, and tracking blockers 
um, for reasons, the top uh, two reasons really are page load speed um, and uh, convenience. Uh, and as well, uh, we're seeing people driven uh, to install these for reasons of privacy, where they're seeing themselves, um, they want to be able to control uh, which tracking networks are, are tracking them across the internet. And there's increased user awareness of the fact that uh, they are being tracked. So for instance, um, there was a recent Harvard Business Review article that linked the installation of content blockers to the rise of the practice of uh, ad retargeting, um, which is a common practice in the ad industry that tries to sell you things that you've already looked at before. Uh, and this uh, it kind of indicates to me and has indicated, I think, to the industry um, that there's a, that people are getting fed up of current um, kind of practices around that. So uh, again, this is a, this is a response to that, uh, to that user need, really. Um, however, it's important to note that Samsung's approach to this is to provide an API. Uh, Samsung is not building any blockers uh, itself. Samsung is uh, leaving that to third parties. So the, so the, uh, the blockers uh, are being developed solely by third parties. Finally, and this is uh, where, we, where, where we have a bit more information as well that I want to share um, that is on this slide. Uh, we have uh, Gear VR integration. So there is a separate uh, browser, which is which is a kind of a sister application to the um, uh, Samsung Internet 4.0, which is the Gear uh, VR or the VR browser, um, which has been available through the normal Oculus Store um, when it comes to users of the um, Gear VR headset. Um, that application has been and is oriented towards uh, streaming of 360 degree, 180 degree, and 3D streaming, 3D video. Um, what we have introduced more recently is something called continuous experience. So uh, in this case, uh, we envision a lot of mixed browsing scenarios where a user might be viewing a web page on their device and moving seamlessly uh, into a VR experience that might be associated with that web page and then moving back to the web page that they were viewing or reading previously. So a good example might be a journalism article on a news site um, where the article is being read in a more traditional mobile browsing um, way, but then the user wants to flip into a um, VR experience that's associated with that journalism um, where they can, uh, they can do that without having to go through the intermediary steps of going into the Oculus experience, clicking on or selecting the, uh, the internet uh, sto um, browser from there and then trying to get to where they were before. It's, it's, so this is the continuous experience that, that we're talking about. Um, as well, uh, we're featuring synced video history and bookmarks. So that means that any video that you viewed um, on, your, on your phone um, uh, in the regular browsing mode will uh, show up in the video history uh, within the Gear VR. Um, and uh, bookmarks are synch synchronized between the two different uh, approaches. So even though it's, two, it's actually two different browsers, the idea is to, uh, to unify the experience and make sure that the user has a continuous experience. Um, as well, we have a quick access site within the VR uh, browser, uh, which is basically a promoted uh, list of, uh, of VR-specific browsing sites. Um, I wanted to also mention that uh, we are working and this is some very exciting work that we're doing with Google and Mozilla on, uh, and others in the community around um, something called WebVR. Um, WebVR is a specification that we've been um, inputting to as well. It has just recently become a W3C community group, 
um, but the, the uh, most recent information on this uh, can be viewed at the at webvr.info, uh, and it's all about building um, VR immersive more VR immersive experiences within the browser uh, and enabling those. And one of the people that's been working on this is Laszlo uh, Gambas, and he's joining us from Boston. Laszlo, maybe you want to say a few words. Sure. Hello, everyone. Um, Dan, can you hear me well? Yes, we're good. Okay. Um, so my name is Laszlo Gombos. I work for Samsung and uh, have been involved in the development of the mobile and VR uh, Samsung browser as well. I just wanted to say a few words about WebVR. Last week, we um, started to sharing some of the information that we we have uh, on WebVR in our product um, in the developer community, and uh, that generated some buzz. Um, we started this effort in the Boston VR uh, working group that we quickly uh, grew, uh, and uh, there was a lot of uh, discussion on that on, on, on Twitter and in the developer community. So WebVR is an experimental JavaScript API that essentially provides access to virtual reality devices. It exposes some of the sensor data, such as the, the head position, to the web, um, so that it's available for developers uh, via JavaScript. The status of the API is still experimental, and, and our implementation is also still experimental. It is primarily targeting developers at this point, but despite the experimental status, um, there's quite a lot of interest in the developer community um, for some of the well-known reasons that the web provides. It's, it's a cross-platform way to target many of the VR devices. Uh, it's probably the only cross-platform way to do that. Um, you can reuse your web skills in a VR environment. You don't have to learn something completely new. And you can also rely on some of the existing web components like, like 3JS or aframe.io to create a uh, compelling VR content. And you also get a little bit more programmatic control of the virtual environment than, than just uh, a 360 video content. And uh, using in combination with WebGL, it allows you to take full control of the virtual environment. And you know this could be for gaming, entertainment, perhaps online shopping, communication or the presence application or, or, or many other more applications. Um, so, so this feature is already included in the release version of the Samsung VR browser and it's available for developers to, to play with. Uh, I'm going to share a link where um, it is described how to enable it because it's not on by default due to its experimental nature. Um, and we would like to hear your uh, feedback on this. Um, and lastly, I want to mention that uh, in the upcoming developer conference, we plan to show you some demos and maybe share with you even uh, some more exciting news on this. Thank you, Laszlo. Okay, so and we're we we're, we'll, 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 we're we're going to take Q and A as well. So we so if you have Q and A on anything that Laszlo mentioned, um, please. Uh, Hold that thought for, for um, Before we move on to q and I just want to mention two opportunities to learn more. Primarily, uh, there is the Samsung Developer Conference coming up in April 28th, 27th, and 28th uh, in San Francisco. Um, and I'm going to be on stage um, talking about uh, uh, Samsung Browser, um, talking about some of these features in more detail. We're also going to have some partners uh, come up and talk about their um, their work uh, with us. Um, and uh, and we're going to have a booth where you can come and have a play of, uh, you know, have a, a demonstration of uh, the uh, how the Samsung VR browser is working and all that kind of stuff. So we're working on that uh, pretty, pretty uh, hard right now getting all of that ready. If you are interested in attending, I'm actually going to um, post a discount link into the chat. Aren't you glad you joined us today? Uh, so the discount link is GDNTZ95. And if you use that discount link, that's uh, 100 
dollar off uh, ticket to uh, Samsung Developer Conference, SDC. Um, the second opportunity that, that I want to talk about is if you happen to be in Europe, um, then you might want to come along to a different kind of event that I'm organizing in uh, on May 9th. Um, this is a, more of a community event called Web Progressions. Uh, it's going to be hosted at Google's um, Campus London facility. Um, and uh, it's a free event, so I can't show you a discount link. Um, if, it, it is actually oversold right now, but if you want to attend, please send me email and I will get you a ticket, okay? Um, and for that, we're going to be focusing, it's going to be a one-day event focusing fully on the uh, concept of progressive web apps. We're going to have uh, speakers from Samsung. We're going to have speakers from Opera. We're also going to have speakers from Chrome and speakers from uh, uh, Firefox, um, underpinning the kind of cross-browser cross nature of this uh, progressive web apps um, platform and the nature of the web. Um, so if you are interested in that, please send me an email. Um, my email is d.applequist at partner.samsung.com. Please note the spelling. I'm going to put that into the chat as well. And um, and I've included a, a few other links at the back of this uh, slide deck here, including uh, a link to the um, uh, Samsung press release for uh, Internet Browser 4.0, um, uh, the uh, article that appeared in Forbes earlier this year, uh, which uh, talked a, a lot about our, our launch, um, and uh, kind of uh, the link to the developer tools, uh, which is probably one of the more important links that you have there. Um, and I'm going to drop that link into the chat as well. Okay. Um, I think that does it for our presentation, and now we want to kind of move into more um, interactive mode. Uh, hello. Uh, so, uh, first of all, um, hi, everyone. Um, and uh, I just wanted to kind of show, first of all, before we move into Q&A, kind of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the, um, the mixed browsing scenario that I was talking about before. So in that case, you might want to uh, be doing normal kind of browsing on the handset here, um, but when you hit a uh, piece of content that is uh, VR enabled, that's either uh, 360 video, streaming video, or it's some kind of more interactive piece of content using the web VR um, specification, uh, you then can immediately kind of plug your handset into the VR uh, goggles and uh, start interacting with that experience. And that's the, the idea is that um, you're not uh, you don't have to go through any intermediate steps there, and then when you when you're done interacting with that experience, you pull the the device out, and you're back to the normal kind of usage mode that you have. Um, okay, so now I think Leslo has also posted his uh, link into the into the chat. Um, so now I think what we're going to do is we're going to take Q and A.